students and welcome to the STEM Institute's Summer Chemistry course. My name is Rex Moretis and I will be your instructor for the next six weeks. What are my expectations from you for this course? Uh, I expect hard work. I expect you to be punctual and attentive during online lectures. But most important, I expect you to be creative in your problem solving approach. What will you get out of this course? You will get a greater understanding of the chemical world around you. You will meet amazing students who share similar passions and hobbies much like yours. I look forward to meeting every single one of you. Until then, remember, life is a chemical reaction. It only requires balancing. Hi guys, I am Ms. Pichardo and welcome to this year's STEM Institute 2020. I know this is a special year, like none other. Um, we will be learning algebra this year virtually. How exciting. Um, so what am I planning to do? I know most of you have taken algebra in high school but we're not gonna do the same topics. I'm covering an algebra class for college. It's basically the same college algebra course that a college student would take. I'm not changing anything. I teach at the college. I'm doing everything exactly the same. So even though you may think that you know algebra, we're going to definitely do new topics that you have never seen. And it will also strengthen the topics that you've already covered. So don't think that you're taking algebra again. It, it's algebra review of what you've already done and then we take it to another level. So we're, we're definitely going to uh, learn new uh, algebra or more, you, you will strengthen your skills in algebra. Um, I do give a lot of homework, um, which if anyone knows, uh, that's always true. Uh, so we basically will go over homework at the beginning, I will teach, we'll get together in groups, work on some problems, and then uh, I usually give a quiz at the end of every session um, to, so that I can figure out whether you are with me or not, or if I need to go over uh, certain areas that you're still weak in. Um, we have a great TA, so you can work with the TA to help you. Uh, I'll give you all my contact information so you're not in a program where you're doing everything by yourself. I'm definitely going to be here to guide you every step of the way. And um, it should be fun. Even though it, I know it's distance learning, um, we're going to try as best as we can to make it fun and engaging. And um, we don't want you to feel like you're left on your own to figure everything out. So we're here to support you. I am Professor Dario Cardenas, and I work at the same institute from several years uh, now. I hold an electrical engineer degree back home and a master degree in applied mathematics at the City College of New York. At the same institute, summer 2020, I will be teaching Calculus 1 and Pre-Calculus. And uh, it is part of my duty to cover uh, City College um, Calculus 1 syllabus uh, for my Calculus students. And in the same way, uh, City College Pre-Calculus uh, syllabus for my Pre-Calculus students. So it is part of my, of my responsibility to go in detail over uh, definitions, uh, theorems, uh, properties, examples, do numerical problems, and go over theoretical uh, problems. So what is your responsibility? Your responsibility is, is to participate in class, it's very important. Do your homework, it's also very, very important in a daily basis, uh, quizzes, will be given uh, every day during the week and exams uh, once a week. And uh, the final exam will be given in the last day of class. Now, uh, let me talk about uh, the syllabus. 
Calculus 1 syllabus covers uh, basically uh, limits, uh, derivatives, application of derivatives, and uh, integrals. Pre-calculus uh, syllabus uh, covers uh, functions, polynomials, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, trigonometric functions, and trigonometry of a right uh, triangle. Uh, now, let me tell you something important. At the STEM program, both courses, Calculus 1 and Pre-Calculus covers more topics in depth than in high school. So I expect that my Calculus and Pre-Calculus students understand very well definitions, theorems, uh, properties, and spend a lot of time practicing both numerical and theoretical problems. So you will be very prepared to move to the next uh, math uh, level. Very often, students are worried about final grades. And according to my record, about 90% of my calculus students got an A. And also, about 90% of my pre-calculus students got an A. And finally, I hope that all the students at the STEM Institute, summer 2020, succeed at the end of the term because a good education is the master key that opens all doors in your life. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is David John. I will be your advanced algebra instructor for the summer. So the first goal for our course this summer, I want to focus on improving algebra skills, right? Many of you have learned algebra in high school, but now we want to hone our skills and develop them, right? Two, I want to talk about how do we solve problems in math, right? How, do we, how can we develop our critical thinking skills, right? Three, I want to use what we've done in one and two to solve real world problems. And then four, we want to have fun because it is summer. So we'll do projects, we'll play games, like it won't just be a math course with I won't talk for three hours, right? I will have, we'll have fun. So this is a quick introduction. I can't wait to see you guys on July 1st. Hi guys, welcome to the STEM Institute, uh, to the general physics class. My name is Deepak Kapoor and I will be teaching uh, uh, general physics. And in general physics, uh, we are going to cover many topics the first topic that we are going to talk about is mechanics and in mechanics we are going to talk about statics, uh, kinematics and dynamics. Mainly we are going to talk about kinematics and dynamics but when we go to the friction we will be also talking about some questions of probability and the question of statics. We will be talking about the waves, we will be talking about electricity, we will be talking about optics. All these topics will be covered in it and if you are interested in any other topic you will let me know and then we are going to take care of that. If you have never done physics, you'll be fine in the class. If you have done some physics, you also will be fine in the class. I'm going to show you some experiments today, and then I want you to think about these experiments, how these experiments, how, what happened during these experiments. The first experiment that I'm going to do is the balloon experiment, and that is defined gravity. So I'm going to inflate this balloon. Okay. In my regular class, I have very two smart TAs and they are Paulina and Michael, but today they are not here. So I'm going to take the help of my own daughter and she's Dia. She's Dia, can you come here? And she's going to help me in doing the experiment. Uh, she is getting ready to be part of the STEM program uh, very soon. So this is the balloon that I inflated and look at this balloon. It, it doesn't want to stick with me. It doesn't want to stay with me. I can't do it. But Dia has some magic. And we're, so I'm going to rub this balloon into the air there. Yes. And now watch this balloon. I am not touching it. I have no glue in my hand or nothing. It's my friend now forever. So this balloon is sticking to my hand. Okay. Here one more time. So I'm defining the gravity just with something. So figure it out. What happened? How it got stick to my hand that it doesn't want to leave me even if I do it straight, go straight, all these things. 
I'm going to show you some another very interesting phenomenon. It's come here with me. I'm going to take you to this faucet and I'm going to open this. Can you see? Can you see the water coming down? If I bring my hand close to it, nothing happens. The water keeps falling in the same direction. Watch what is going to happen when I bring the balloon here. I'm again rubbing it with the ice head here. I'm going to take some energy or I don't know. You got to figure it out what I'm trying to take out from there and watch what happens when I, watch what happens when I bring the balloon close to it. Wow. So I am making this water turn its path. How did I do that? With the sound, something connected with the sound. I have this fine glass, some water into it, and try to listen to the sound. Okay, can you turn that AC off? Can you hear the sound? We turn the AC off. Can you hear that sound? Yes, so this is the sound. I want you to figure out why this is making this kind of a sound. And if you if you like rapping, probably you can use this sound and we'll be learning a lot of vocabulary words into the classroom and you can use those vocabulary and put it in the raps. That's one experiment. The next experiment that I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna take this glass. Leah, yeah, can you give me some water, please? Bring me some water, yes. Half it, yes, a little more, a little more, a little more, that's it. And then can you bring me that liquid in that cup that you have? Yes, can you can you pour into it? It's a different kind of a liquid that I'm mixing it up with this water. Mix it up. Do you see that beautiful pattern? You see these mix, these two liquid did not mix. Probably you can figure it out easily that this is an oil and this is the water and why these two liquids are not mixing because they are different properties figure it out what these properties let's make it a little more interesting so for that what i'm going to do i'm going to put some water color into it food color sorry what color do you like dia yellow, yellow? okay let's put, put some yellow into there like three four drops maybe Okay, any other color that you like besides yellow? You wanna put blue? Okay, put the blue in there. And I'm going to put this into this now. Drop this magic tablet into it and see what happens. Whoa. Do you see that? Yeah. That's such an interesting phenomenon. Probably most of the time the chemistry teachers also use it and uh, find out what is happening. Those, you see those that serves drilling it out of this thing, liquid, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's like a fountain that is coming up. Interesting. Right? Next phenomena that we are going to talk about is about magnets. And for that, what I have is I have a. Uh, can you get me a dry piece of paper from the printer? Thank you. All right. So we are going to do this. I have this magic thing there. Look at this. Now we got to focus on this page. What happened? Dia, watch what happens when I'm going to sprinkle on this. Tell me if you see any pattern here. Do you see anything? No. Nothing? No. Absolutely nothing. Sure? Yep. All right. So let me do it the other way. What I'm going to do now, I'm putting it back into it. And then I'm going to take one magnet. I'm going to put under this and now watch the eye. Ready? Mm. See. Do you see something? Yeah. Is it a pattern? Mm -hmm. Right? 
So this is the magnetic lines of force. This basically it's created a magnetic field. That magnet has created a magnetic field. And this thing that I put on it, I'm not going to tell you the name, figure it out. And then this has actually created some kind of a magnetic pattern into it. And that is from one pole to another. And you want to see more fun there? Watch. You see? It moves wherever I go. Wherever I take the magnet, it moves. Even if it's under the paper, it still has such a strong attraction. This is nothing but actually it's iron fillings. This is iron fillings and that has a magnetic problem. Before we come to that glass. The next experiment that we have, uh, and probably that is one of the very interesting experiment, and that I'm going to show you with the help of this water bottle. I have this water bottle, and I am going to fill it with the water. And I made a hole into the bottom of this. And the moment I release the water, it comes out like a jet in the form of like a projectile. So, but watch what happens when I close the cap, the water stops. So find out why this water stops when I close the cap and why the water starts back again as soon as I open the cap. You, that's, that's something that you want to do on the search. Looking forward to meet with you very soon. Greetings. My name is Andreas Phillips. First off, my heart goes out to all the families that have been affected by the hardships we are facing this year. I wish you all to continue being smart, tough, unified, disciplined, and loving in this ongoing situation. So why am I here? Well, simply put, I really like games any kind of games. I knew I wanted to learn about gaming as soon as I graduated high school. So I looked for schools that can teach me and joined what I could to learn anything I can. Then right after graduating, I started to help teams design and build games for many different kinds of platforms. The work was anywhere in between adding sounds and playtesting to coding the entire math libraries and visual effects. I also piloted workshops, summer programs, and international events for many other schools and universities. Now, I work in the STEM Institute in the City College of New York to bring you the game design class. This will prepare you for further study in the fields of engineering and design. This is a great way to learn how to make games and script your own gameplay events. You don't even need any prior experience, just a modern computer that is capable of performing with the gaming software. The class is also completely free and includes an extra package of tutorials that were designed as self-taught curriculum. Don't worry, we'll still show you how to work in a game engine so that you can bring your ideas into reality. So do you want to code, prototype, design levels, build systems, storyboard concepts, or all of the above? Whatever it is, I want to see every student build their unique portfolio with what they are passionate about. The game design class will cover many parts of the game production process, such as programming foundations, gameplay interactions, storytelling, and game theory. You will also work with the same age group and collaborate with friends to build games together. Problem solving and analytical skills are practiced by coding in the C++ programming language. C++ is the most widely used programming language to work with when building games. Attending each class will give you all the surprises we have to offer, so you don't want to miss a single day. You can also chat with me at the end of the day to ask questions about the industry. That being said, I expect professionalism from everybody. Everyone must arrive on time and finish up with the respect for each peer and the work that was done during class. Everyone will finish with a unique 3D level and a simulated game event including an obstacle and a goal. And at least one file will be coded. By the end of it all, we will share and play our games together. So how about it? Come join the STEM Institute this summer.
my name is Crystal Ramro, but I will be your English instructor for the STEM Institute summer program this year. The critical reading and writing course is designed like a college course and will cover the basic English grammar conventions and the interconnected processes of creative nonfiction and fiction. You'll also have the ability to demonstrate your creative writing skills through three major writing projects administered throughout our time together. Because we're only together for six weeks, when you look at that syllabus, it may seem like it's a lot of work. Rest assured, I'm here to help as long as you show me that you're willing to work and ready to learn. My expectations from you are that you come into this course with an open mind and you leave this course with an appreciation for the art of storytelling. With the current events going on in our world today, art has unified us across all disciplines and walks of life, despite color and culture. With that said, I'm super stoked that you guys have signed up for this course and I'm looking forward to learning both with and from you all. See you soon.